Hey, this Young Buck, and you tuned in to Exclusive Stories with Bro Jackson behind the list. And today I got J.O. in the building. You How know? you feeling? Man, high as ever. Enjoying life. Yeah. You feel me? So let them know what you do, man. They don't know who the J.O. is, man. Man, I mean, your favorite weed man's favorite weed man, man. Mr. Exotic himself. Reason you niggas smoke cookies. You feel me? Sherbet, gelatos, runs. You know, I've been... Behind the scenes, a lot of this shit. For years. For years. You know? Born and raised in Frisco. Home of the Nade and Champ. You know what I mean? If you don't niggas want to smoke a Nade and Champ, you really don't know. Yes. Get a little quick. You know what I mean? I opened my first camp up 2009. Vallejo. First club ever carried cookies and cherry pie. What was it called? Solace. Okay, yeah. Solace? Mm hmm. Yeah. Feel me? Home of the exotics, you know what I mean? Jack, we did Jack's private reserve. Feel me? Then we came with the cookies. Niggas didn't know what cookies was. They were smoking purple. You know, Jack and everybody off their granddaddy. Barney, you feel me? We did. So I'm like, man, fuck it, we about to switch it up. We don't sell no purple here. Private reserve, Jack's OG. Cookies, cherry pie, all exotics. Okay. Feel me? Mm -hmm. Niggas, I went around, you know, I mean, to feel the clubs, motherfuckers, on that shit too high, man. What is this, man? I don't know nothing about it, man. It's that shit. Shit took off. You feel me? The rest is history. You yeah. know? Man, we went to the lobby with the Sherbert. It's it, Cherry Pie, Pink Panties. So, you know, I'm an original cookie fam. You know what I mean? I, I, I fuck with niggas before we was doing weed. I always been before it was branded. Fuck, Frank, them, yeah. before them niggas was even growing weed, yeah. selling weed, smoking weed. We all got high at my house. I sold, you know what I mean? I was hustling. You feel me? Why you always had the best weed? Always had the best weed. Okay. I sold dope to get good weed. No cap. When I was hustling, moving around, you know, we started off Dolores Park, Bammer, then he got bombed. Dank, purple, Kush, Nade, Champ, Poison, you feel me? The nigga OG Shock was running around with all the dope, crazy shit, you feel me? My nigga Low had dope, crazy shit. Everybody was having dope. So I'm like, man, I just, I don't like to buy bags, nigga. Well, funky ass ain't probably been an ace since I was like, nigga, 12, 13 years old, nigga. By 15, I'm buying zips, nigga. My weed man look like, what you doing with zips? I like, mean, I smoke. You feel me? I'm running through it every day anyway. Running through it every day. Everybody knew I had weed. So when I, Jack was like, bro, you just gotta be like the weed man. I'm like, all right, I'll be the weed man. So everywhere Jack went, I went. And nigga, I always had weed. So everybody knew me for, but j got weed. I'm like, okay, okay. And it just stuck with me. Weed was always my favorite thing to do, you feel me? So the club shit that taught me really the difference, really the potential of what we could do for people, medicinal, personal, you know what I mean? Really help motherfuckers. Keep people sane, keep people calm. Yeah. You know I mean, change a motherfucker life. So I'm like, okay. I took it more serious. Started doing my first game like Lucky Charms, you feel me? Lucky Charms, we did the it hit. Now we start pushing. We did like the lemon meringue, you feel me, the four and five, the sunny D. It was a little cross strands that we had going. Yeah. So that's when I found out the power of breeding with jigging. I'm like, man. It's cross and shit. When you cross shit, you come with dope shit, you use dope shit to make dope shit dope. You can't go use blue dreams. Nah. It makes it with a runts. And then you don't have some dope shit because that blue dream gonna water it down. You gotta know what you're doing, you gotta know that pair of shit. It's like wine. So we started spice to do it. We came up with nerds. Nerds was my first big hit. Feel nerds, me? yeah. Nerds kind of, you know what I mean? Set my whole little whoop off. We was at a birthday party, you know. LB. What's that cross? You can't say it's it. a it's a Skittles and a gelato cross. Skittles and gelato. Ooh, it's a okay. Skittles and gelato. That's it's a nerds. Skittles and gelato. That was nerds. You feel me? You feel me? And then we went to a little birthday party with LB and all them. And Red Bomb and they was like, bro. 
Big Red Playhouse and weed. So I picked out what later became on Runtz, you feel me? I'm Pink Runtz, you feel me? And you know what I mean? I'm like the white label. Yeah. So a lot of niggas fuck me, a lot of niggas who brands be popping, you know what I mean? My weed, once upon a time, was in their bag first. You feel yeah, me? straight up. Everybody had to keep yeah, runs. It was everywhere. Keep a gangster, you feel me? From that tell them. A lot of no, other known brands. They just come get their weed because they know I got dope. And they put that in their bag and they get their shit popping. I'm not a hater. I love that shit, my nigga. I don't get my props for it. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, they was getting their packs from you, putting their labels on there, and boom. So then I it was like, fuck it, I need to start doing my whole shit. So then I came up to J.O. Exotics. Jail exotics. Yeah, I'm like 32 strands in this shit. Class, but everyone from like Mozzie, fucking La Rue, Cousin Feek, Cookie Money, FB DC, you feel me? Ship of Flow Rider, Tory Lanez and them coming. You know what I mean? I got some shit. A few sports athletes, you know what I mean? We do what I think. Yeah. You know, so. It all come full circle. And I just learned, you know what I mean, that the power in the weed is growing the weed and developing strands. You meet so many people along the way too, huh? And so many opportunities, you feel me? Like that's how I met Flow Rider. My boy Dot. That's big, Flow Rider. Yeah, my boy S Dot, you feel me? From Acorn, you feel me? Call me twelve o'clock at night. What's up, bro? I'm like, what's up? Like, man, Flo and them on the holly. I'm like, huh? And then they smoked the grill, they let us shit. I'm like, what? I was like, yeah, man, come fuck with us. That's good. You know, I've been fucking with like E class and chucking all the niggas out there. You feel me? So, you know what I mean? When they run my name, they're like, oh, hey, bro, you been having good dope. I'm like, yeah, for you niggas been fucking with me for years. You know? It's about longevity in the game. A lot of these niggas is short term in this. They don't understand. The point of the longevity of the hustle. It ain't yeah. a short win. They fall off. They're they only there for a season. Only there for a season. Are they, are they shit get watered down? A lot of niggas should be popping. And in a year or two, you don't hear about that shit no more. They went in for longevity. And they get niggas to tell you, I've been, they've been buying weed for me since 96, 93. Yeah, you should have been had a strain years ago. That made a lot of niggas rich. It's a learning process. It was learning. So now, I invested in myself. I my own strands where you're trying to serve people who are, you mean, strategic partnerships. I grow my own weed. So, it involves. You feel yeah. me? Yeah. It involves. You know what I mean? We got some big shit. The first people. Break room and, and great ground in uh, Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico? Puerto Rico. Yeah. We made Yahoo News. Feel me? That's big. That's big shit coming. Feel me? One of the first motherfuckers to be able to go to Europe and distribute weed. Yeah. Feel me? We got some shit coming for them. You know what I mean? Because weed's opening doors. It's weed. crazy. Everyone smokes weed. And if they don't smoke weed, then. Even as we call the Silicon Valley, the, the tech, tech geeks, and just people with money in general, <coughs> they're investing money into weed because it's a multi billion dollar business. The only business you could really just come in and it costs money and you make your money. And I remember Weed Maps called me. I mean, you want to advertise? Advertise with what? I'm good. Who are you? Yeah. So you gonna tell me I'm supposed to give you $125 and you gonna put me on a website to say you can buy weed from me. Back then it was all non-profit, so you know what I mean? It was sketchy. It's like I can get money free. Look where weed maps is today. Yeah, they, that's where everybody goes now, wherever they anywhere, like right. So then, me and my partner, you feel me? Me and my boy Mike James, we go. We map. We maps want to fuck with us. Yeah. We go. We maps. You know what I mean? We talk, and I'm, I'm like, yeah, I remember when y'all first started. You know? A lot of ownership to change. 
nigga. We they got a break room right below. I say break room, niggas go and just try shit out too. I just yeah, you know, break shit. So they, they, you know what I mean? That's what they say to make a break room. People send shit in too, just to be at the top of the list. All oh, that, so I go in there, blow the niggas' socks down. <coughs> we walk out of my behind the cube. Right on, blood pleasure with you, bro, bro. When y'all coming next? Time? Yeah, they might have smoked something, but they ain't smoked this. You niggas can't fuck me. Not to be cocky, but like I'm known for having the best week. Me and bro was just talking about that. Like, like a lot of y'all major brands, they fuck with me when it comes to weed. I ain't gonna pick nobody out there, but they buy weed for me. They fuck with me on weed because I've always known to have good weed. It's another level. Your it's shit's another, another level. level. It's another level of weed. Like, like I know how to hand pick that that dope. I'm eccentric when it comes to weed. Eccentric, yeah. That's why I say Seth, Shabinsky, Jigga, me, apart from a lot of other people who grew me and really made brands out of their shit because of the weed, it was the quality of the weed. Cookies was the best weed hands down of 2010 to probably 2014. That's what everybody was so mad at. What's happening? It was, I got real cookies. cookies. I got real cookies. Cookies is now the new OG. Yeah. I got blue cookies. Galactic cookies. So I, mean, I made blue cookies. <laughs> I made that name up. They tell you, I made the name blue cook cookies. So get it. After the Galactic. Galactic, I remember that too. Came to Thin Mint. Well, at first it was Thin Mint. It was always Thin Mint. But the Galactic was that first, that frosty, hairy with the hair, but yeah. barely trimmed because it was just so frosty. Then he popped a bean and he came with the blue cut. And I was like, bro, this shit's man, purple, bro. This is blue. Call this shit blue cut. Then I started finding the power of the name of weed. Cookie Monster. It was never a strand. That was because, nigga, act, ah, what are we doing? Then we got cookies. What's going to have cookies? Yeah. I'm taking these cookies, nigga. Definitely. I was the Cookie Monster. <laughs> I was the repo man. I was coming to get you. Hold on, where you get that? Where you get that from? Let me see that. All right, I'm bro. We don't know you. you. Feel me? I'm going into clubs that we fuck with. Hey, bro, look, man, out of respect. Who brought it in? Yeah. Who sold you this bullshit? This is not it. And bro, you gotta yeah, take the name. Yeah, you got you gotta take that shit off the board, bro. Feel me? Like, it, it gotta come off by the day. Like, you got to take it in. You can't have a girl's girl put it in your pocket. Because you're not buying it from us. So, you're not about to use the name to make some money. And that's what people nowadays use. They got fake bags, got fake weed. Put it in the motherfuckers' name. So, now somebody be like, oh, I got runs. Oh, I got this. You right. Some of the motherfuckers never even spoke with once. Because it's not about the weed, it's more about the name of the weed, the bag. You feel me? We done lost touch with that. There's a lot of fake shit going on. There's no more real, there's no more, there's no more holding the motherfucking accountable. Like, what you smoking, bro? Like, niggas then when you smoke purple, it was purple. Yeah, it was purple. It was fake granddaddy. You couldn't come with no blue dreams talking about this and granddaddy. And I'm like, man, fuck no, nah. we smoke grapes, nigga. Yeah. Was it Uncle Bob, Bob. Yeah. nigga knew what Uncle Bob was. A lot of motherfuckers don't know Uncle Bob cat piss. That was our first when we first getting real flavors in Frisco. A lot of you niggas don't even know your your real history of weed. The best weed, as they say, came from California, right? But the best weed came from the Bay Area. Humble County got outdoor. Yeah. We didn't have outdoor. Our first weed encounters, we storm straight indoor. All power shit. All power. You feel me? Y'all didn't do that. We had animal cookies, New Wave, Cherry Garcia. That's a piece true. That's my baby, my brother. You feel me? Gonna keep his name alive and his strands is coming alive still. You feel me? Motherfuckers was passionate about that shit. So I have the best tasted weed of the power shit. I got the, the best weed level. ever. You see, like, bro? Because you know why? That sets you apart. Yeah. 
You remember first time you smoked cookies? Yeah. You remember first time you smoked OG? Remember the first time you smoked brandy? You remember the first time you smoked once? First time you smoked Skittles, New Way, Blue Ivy. But anyway, with go, like he would say, he remember the first time he, bro was saying, he remember the first time he spoke with uh, your blood. Cause he said by the second hit, he felt that power. You just, whenever you feel that power, you're like, hold up, that's a whole different. It's a different animal. Different animal. Where's this from? I need that. I'm that type of nigga, I used to buy hella weed. If a nigga had dope, I'm your best customer, my nigga. I'm like a crackhead for you. I'm like, let me get that. I'm like, fuck if it's, you know what I mean? Let me get it. It's dope, I want it. So I do all the best weed men in the back. I'm going everywhere. Yeah. 2000, Jason Beck. And my nigga uh, had a canvas cup on H Street. Got me a car. 2000, no one had no canvas car. <coughs> that shit called Pharmacy Blue Dot. Smoking. I'm there every day. That's what I learned about cannabis clubs. My friend, you can be in here and just sweet. This is yeah. my dream. The OCB cards and shit. Yeah, I remember getting a little. So or the OCB cards. Card. These were the state cards. You could only get your state card there. I ain't gonna lie, when I was in high school, I went to church on Church of the Boats in San Francisco. Des Perron opened the first cannabis club in the corner across from Safeway. My school half a block up. Nigga used to watch the motherfucker walk by with these brown bags every day. The motherfucker was smoking, smoking, smoking. Brown paper bags, they got lunch in it up. Yeah, we like, we got weed right here. You know, back then, back then, we bag snatching, doing all types of bad shit. We was young. I mean, let's see. Hit a bag, hit a corner, grab a bag, boom, weed in it. Put right. that weed in the building. See, everybody go in this building, come out with these brown bags. You know, we young, too. We buy some weed. Right. It's a cannabis club. Fuck is a cannabis club, bro? You gotta be a member. How are you gonna be a member? First of all, y'all too young. Man, fuck the too young. Man, you know, I got weed in here. Bro, it's one or two ways we gonna get this, bro. But we need some weed out of here. You feel me? Tim Curry, they used to give us a little bag. Keep us, I mean, if you doing dumb shit, yeah. to a little patience, you feel me? But my whole dream was to get into this cannabis club. We tried, we done had a little, you feel me? But that was the whole thing, like, bro. They got weed. Hell weed. In this building right here behind this door. <laughs> you ain't gotta go to Dolores Park, you know, handful of bammer. You you know, we mean especially I don't know how it was like in East Bay. They were slow out there too. Yeah, for sure. You know the weed man You wait for that motherfucker, you page him. This back we had pagers. This wasn't you know what I mean, this back in the day. You know, you had pagers, you had to page your call you back. I mean, it take you two, three hours to get your weed. Nigga sold 20 sacks. Yeah. Feel me? Or you go to like Patrol Hill, Third Street. That Nate. Nate. I say Nate was dope. Nate probably never you know we as strong as Nate. We don't know what it was. It's a few rumors. <laughs> we don't know. There was no testing in. I just know. <laughs> you smoke blunt. You wake up in the morning. You're still high. You might pass out if you try to smoke an eighth to the neck. <laughs> if you niggas didn't call that hospital talking about they can't breathe, they can't feel their heart, they think they had a heart attack. Nigga, that shit was dope, nigga. And it's only weed in history you knew it was short when you bought it. Yeah. It was $60 for 2.5 to 3 grams. <laughs> now, back in the day, I got five on the thing by JT and M. It was serious. If you had four dollars, you wouldn't smoke it. Period. Yeah. You had to throw that five on it. The nigga had a scale for an eighth of weed. We wasn't working with hundreds of thousands like that. Nigga put his little sixty, seventy dollars that he paid for that. He put that on a scale. It's three point three, three point four. Hey bro, where my weed at, bro? 
it can become an issue over that. You go Third Street Patrol Hill, you knew your shit was short. <laughs> them motherfuckers stop calling them apes. They call them puffs. You can get your 30 puffs, my nigga. 35 or something. You know what I mean? 45. Nigga, it was short. And you went and bought that shit back to back to back, knowing it was short. You didn't even weigh name. You just happy to get it. No, no, it was him. Man, <laughs> knowing you could get it. There's three places you could get named. Lakeview, Patrol Hill, and Third. Niggas from everywhere, from Oakland, Sacramento, any Bay Area city, EPA, San Jose, anywhere. If you were smoking nade, you came to one of them three spots to buy the weed. That shit was already cut up, broke down. Who did that? Why y'all cut the weed up? I mean, you don't need to know. Weed's cut up. Here you go, your weed. Damn, that's crazy. We bought this shit, though. No no cap, no lie. Niggas was buying it. Niggas just stopped real. We call regular Cali. We stopped real, smoking regular weed. That weed man going out of business. You ain't got no name. I'm cool. <laughs> hey, you cool. Uh, I'm smart. Or some pain. Or some pain. We ain't no champagne or name. Yeah, I'm cool, bro. That was regular. That's regular, my nigga. Okay. Oh, y'all paying eighty, ninety dollars for a real eighth. You call a nigga, but hey, bro, check this out. Don't cut my shit up. I never lie. I used to call journey man. Bro, look, but I got paper. Don't cut my weed up, please. We buy like a quarter half ounce. Like, oh, really? I got a scale. I'm going to use my skill. I'm going to give you all your money. I think I get my shit a little piece like a half ounce was like that big. Because they was compressing that shit. The first time weed was compressed. We ain't know nothing about no compressed weed. They getting this shit from somewhere in Canada. So shit used to come in a little paint buckets compressed. So they used to cut the weed up. Not being, if you wasn't privileged to know that, you didn't know that. You just knew you was cutting up some little green brownish weed and getting high as fuck. It was just different. So I, I've always been with that cutting edge of that, sh that new shit. Like, oh, I remember my first time I smoked champ. And you smoke champ. If you've ever smoked real, real, real champagne, when you walk out the room and walk back in, that whole room smell like pain. Okay? Motherfucker, don't you fire up? Ooh, you got shams. 